Welcome back. Today we're going to be creating a new project in AutoCAD Electrical using the Project Manager. And while we don't create as many projects as we do drawings and schematics and those types of things, it's important to understand how to do it and make sure that you follow some rules so that you're understanding exactly what you're doing. So stick around and we'll create our first project in AutoCAD Electrical. Today we're going to be creating a new project in AutoCAD Electrical. But before we do, a little bit of review. Anytime you're working on a project, you need to have your project manager up over here on the left hand side of the screen. If you accidentally close your project manager, no problem. All you have to do is go up here on the ribbon to the project tab and click on this tool right here that says manager and it'll bring it back up for you. Once you've got it up, you can adjust the size as necessary. Okay. You could even do things like, you know, let it roll up so that it's not visible when you don't want to see it and that kind of thing. But for the most part, most of us keep this, you know, out and up so that you can see it. Now, looking at this, <clears throat> there are several tools along the top. You'll see that there's open project, new project, new drawing, refresh, and so on. And then right here at the top, it has NFPA demo, that's the active project. Okay, if I drop this down, it'll show all of the other projects that are loaded but not active. You can have as many projects in AutoCAD Electrical as you want, but you can only have one project active at a time. So if I wanted to make this JIS demo active, I could simply click on it here. You'll see that it moves it to the top of the list and it puts it in bold. And now this is the active project. Now this drawing right over here is not a part of the active project. So you kind of have to be aware of what you're doing when you're working in AutoCAD Electrical. In FPA demo, which was the active project, is now moved down the list a little bit. Okay, it's there in alphabetical order. If I want to make that one the active project, I could either drop this down and choose it off of the list, or I could right click on it right here, choose activate, Again, it elevates it to the top of the list, puts it in bold, and so again, now this is the active project. If I expand the project by put, clicking on the little plus right next to it, you'll see that it has a list of all of the drawings in the project and any structure that's there. So you can see that the NFPA demo project has subfolders in here where it has a folder for a subfolder for schematic drawings and a subfolder for panel drawings. Um, <clears throat> additionally, you can only uh, use some of these tools on the project manager when you have a drawing open. So for example, if I were to come over here and close this drawing, notice that some of these tools now go away. So I cannot open a new project or, or create a new project and I can't create a new drawing because I don't have a drawing open. I could open up a new project, but if I want to create a new project, I can't do that, at least off of here, without having a project or without having a drawing open. So I'm just going to double click on this. Again, I've just turned this drawing on or opened this drawing up and now you'll see that these other tools that were previously grayed out have come back to life. So if I want to create a new project, <clears throat> the easiest way to do it is either to click right here where it says new project, or I could go to the NFPA demo drop down here and come all the way down here and click new project right here. When I do so, <clears throat> it gives me the option to create a new project and I can give this any name that I want. So I'm going to say, let's call it um, practice project one. And then it asks me where I want that location to be. And if you look at it, what it's doing is it's the default location is it's putting it down in here where the rest of the projects exist. If I click on the browse button right here, you'll see that it has the little map and it shows me where we go. So, you know, documents, AutoCAD electrical. Okay. And then projects is the one that is here. If I expand this, you'll see that there are some different projects. There's AEGS and, you know, NFPA is in here on the list as well. NFPA demo. Okay. Now, 
what I can do is I can either make the folder now or I can make the folder later. So I'm going to go ahead and choose make new folder and I'll just call it practice here. You'll see that it creates the folder in this same area okay, called practice. And now right here it's making that practice the current folder. Um, what I would suggest is that you do not have this box checked. Notice that there's a box here that says create a folder with the project name. If I check this, it's going to create another folder inside of this folder with the same name. So you don't really need that as long as you're differentiating them with where they need. And then finally, it says copy the settings from the project file. Just like regular AutoCAD, you never want to start from scratch. You always want to start with something else that you know works. In this example, um, it's saying let's start with the NFPA demo project. NFPA is the National Fire Protection Agency or Association or whatever. And basically it's a nonprofit organization that is not an enforcement organization, but they publish standards for drawings and fire protection and that kind of stuff. And what happens is most of the United States, uh, most of the municipalities in the United States adopt NFPA standards for their drawings and their information that you need to be able to get through a plan check or whatever. So it's a good one to start with if you're here in the United States. If you're somewhere else in the world, you might use GIS or ISO or whatever it happens to be. Now from here, you can come in and you can add descriptions. These descriptions are things that are going to show up in the title block among other places. And it's a little bit wonky right now because you'll see on the light on the side here, it just says line one, line two, line three, line four, line five, and so on. <clears throat> now, it's not important right now, but later on I'll be showing you how to change this so that it doesn't say line one, line two, line three, but you can actually say make it say things like drawing title and project name and engineer and those types of things. So I'm just going to fill a few of these in for now just so that they're in here. So I'll call this practical AutoCAD and inventor. Because that's the name of this um, channel. And then uh, this is AutoCAD electrical. And this is my first project, so I'll call it project number one. And then again, the rest of these things you could come in here and you could put in like job numbers and dates and those kinds of things. But it's not that important that I fill them all right now. And I'll choose, uh, and, and then I can choose OK. Before I do though, notice over here on the right hand side that I can check whether or not I want this information to be in reports that I put in in the future. So while I didn't put one in for the date, maybe I was going to put the date in right here, I could double, I could check that one so that the date would also be in reports. I'll choose OK. Now the only other thing that you might be interested in when you're creating a new project <clears throat> is to choose this properties button right here. If I just choose OK, it creates the project, it comes over here, makes it the add to active project and so on. But if I choose OK and then properties, it gives me more opportunities to look at what we can change. So I'm going to do that right now. Notice that it takes a moment, it thinks about it a little bit. It does include now practice project number one over here that I've just created. But now it gives me some project settings and some other things that I can change. So for example, schematic libraries. Again, all of the buttons and switches and lights and all of that kind of stuff that would be inside of a drawing is a part of a schematic library. And you can see here that the default libraries include NFPA and NFPA1. So those are my default ones. It's going to look in either of these first. But if I have maybe custom libraries that I've created, I would want to add those to this list. And we'll talk about how to do that in future videos. On the components tab, it'll have things like how are components going to be named. So by default, you'll see it has a percent F percent N that's going to give us the family name and then the line number so for example a push button on line 101 would be PB line 01 or PB 101 you can come in here and you can change that you can add to it you could subtract to it so subtract from it we'll look at some of those other things 
There's information about wire numbers, about cross-referencing, how things are going to be shown on different pages. <clears throat> Pardon me, different styles. You know, how do you want your numbers to be if you're doing uh, PLCs and those kinds of things. And then your drawing format. If you're making ladders, do you want them to be vertical or horizontal? What is your default spacing? You can come in and you can set that all up on this page. And if you do it here, you don't have to do it on any new drawings in the future. If I choose OK, then it saves it, all of those changes that I might have made. And again, I'm ended, I end up over here with practice project number one. But notice that there's no plus over here on the left-hand side. There's no plus on the left-hand side because I haven't added any drawings to this project. So that's going to be the thing that we look at in future videos is adding drawings to projects and working with projects in that fashion.